Hey guys, it's Jess with Oak and Grain. Thank you so much for joining me for my first ever YouTube video. As you know, if you already follow me on my bigger platform, Instagram, I love taking old furniture and giving it a whole new life, which is exactly what we're gonna do today. So let's dive right in and give this MCM dresser a nice modern update. So this is the dresser that my client brought me. It's a beautiful MCM Dixie piece. And I know a lot of you are thinking, oh, please don't paint it. I'm going to, but only a portion of it. I'm going to do my best to keep the top portion natural to really highlight that beautiful wood grain. Of note, it is covered completely in veneer. So we're going to have to be extra careful when sanding that down. If this makeover sounds fun, go ahead and hit that subscribe button before we really jump into it. I always start by giving my piece a really thorough cleaning. I love this degreasing agent crud cutter that really cuts through the gunk and grime that I don't want to push into the open grain of my wood when I go to sand, which could give me adhesion issues later. Then I tape the hardware holes to ensure no paint seeps inside the drawer. Quick little tip, I usually make these little tabs on drawers so they're easy to open close after the hardware is removed. Here you can see I'm just testing out some of the drawers to ensure they're not scraping in the bottom and unfortunately several of them are and they all just need a little lift. So I'm using these tack and drawer glides that I found on Amazon and I just hammer them into the drawer pockets and it gives you just a little lift so your drawers don't rub or scrape. Once all of my drawers were gliding smoothly, I then moved on to sanding. For the body of the dresser, I'm just doing a scuff sand, and all that means is you're scuffing up the surface enough to make it rough for paint or primer to adhere to. Here I'm using a Surf Prep half inch foam pad in medium plus, which conforms really nicely to those drawer details. For the top portion of the dresser, I'm going to be stripping it down to raw wood for that dipped look. But because this is veneer, I'm going to be extra careful and I'm first going to use a chemical stripper to remove the finish with less sanding required. Less sanding equals less of a chance that I'm going to blast through the veneer. If this was just a full solid wood top, I would just start with like an 80 grit, move to 120 and move to 220. This product really isn't environmentally or human friendly, so be sure to use all of your personal protective equipment and contact your local waste management company to see the best, safest way to dispose of this. To remove all that sticky residue, we're gonna follow that with an afterwash and these 3M stripping pads and just give it a nice scrub down. And don't forget about those drawers. That was probably the most time consuming step. Being extremely careful, I sanded down the top and the drawers nice and smooth using a 220 grit. And I did a lot of hand sanding just to ensure I preserved all of that beautiful veneer. Next, I moved on to sanding down the base to raw wood. Luckily, this was real wood, so I could just go crazy. One of the biggest challenges of this project was the fact that the veneer and the wood base were totally different woods, yet I wanted them to match. Please excuse Berkeley, he just wanted a little camera time. So here I'm just top coating the top portion of the dresser, which is the veneer, because I want to know exactly what color it is after top coating so I can stain the base to match. I started by applying a wood conditioner to the legs and the base. This just really helps your stain absorb more evenly. And to get a color match as close to the veneer top as possible, I ended up using a mix of Varathane Honey and Golden Pecan. I first applied the Golden Pecan and then just did a really thin layer of honey over that. And I didn't picture it here, but you're probably wondering, I ended up top coating the legs and the base with a General Finishes gel top coat. 
I repeated the process on the drawer dividers and this thin lip just under the top. This is me doing just a quick color check and I say we're pretty close. After taping off the upper natural portion, I primed in white using Kills Restoration water-based primer. I love this primer because it performs like a shellac, yet it's water-based so it's really easy to clean out of your sprayer. I like priming in white first even if I'm going a dark color because it really highlights imperfections or open grain that you might want to fill before going on to painting. Here I'm just sanding down the filler with my favorite Amazon sanding sponge. Because my client chose a dark color for this piece, I'm then going to prime in black and Rule of thumb, anything that goes through my sprayer gets strained. And this black primer says don't water it down, but I do. If you want a really smooth finish, sand lightly between each coat. I absolutely love these Surf Prep Rad Pads. Now for everybody's favorite part, the painting. I'm gonna be doing a custom mix of Wise Owl One Hour Enamel in Jet Black and Inkwell. This is one of my all-time favorite paint lines to use and it's because it does not require a top coat and the dry time is one hour. Which is the perfect amount of time to clean up your hardware while it dries. For this step you'll need water, vinegar, fine steel wool, gloves, and something like tongs to remove from boiling water. Using equal parts water to vinegar I'll boil the hardware for 10 to 20 minutes and as you can see just boiling it gets all of this gunk nice and loose. And then I follow that up with fine steel wool and barkeeper's friend and it scrubs up really nice and shiny. Here's a nice comparison of the before and after. I ended up doing a total of two coats of the Wise Owl one hour enamel, but this is my favorite part, removing the tape. Isn't that so satisfying? I then reattached the hardware and I'm so happy with how it cleaned up. And I get asked a lot what I do with the edges of my drawers when I spray with the drawers in the body of my dresser. I just hand paint them. As a final fun touch, I line the drawers using this beautiful paper from Spoonflower. A little trick I love is to use double-sided tape instead of removing the backing on the wallpaper. This makes it one, easier to install, and two, easier to remove, say the lining of your drawers gets dirty or stained, or you simply want to change in style. And this is the beautiful end result. It's exactly what my client had in mind, and I have to say I am very pleased with the final look. If you guys stuck around for that entire video, I want to thank you so much for being here and thanks for supporting me in my big YouTube endeavor. It really means a lot. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe, like, comment, do all the things, and I will see you next time for another furniture.